Hey guys, thanks for tuning in to another video book review on ForgottenWeapons.com. I'm Ian McCollum, and today we are taking a look at Thornycroft to SA-80 British Bullpup Firearms by Mr. Jonathan Ferguson. Uh, I should be upfront with you that this is not necessarily a completely unbiased review, as uh, I had a hand in the publication of this book. This, was, this is the second book to be published by Headstamp Publishing. We are extremely happy that it is now in stock, in the warehouse, and shipping. So if you've been waiting for it to arrive before you place an order, well, now it's here. So let's take a look at what we actually have in here. This is uh, significantly longer than our first book at 620 pages, and it covers, well, as the title implies, the whole history of British bullpup firearms. The British have this interesting national military recurring interest in the bullpup. Uh, more so than any other country. But the three main periods of British military bullpup design are not actually technically uh, related to each other. They were all independent developments. So the first was in the years after the Second Boer War, um, the first years of the 1900s, with the Thornycroft and the Godsall, which are both 303 British caliber bolt-action bullpup rifles developed uh, well, largely for the cavalry. Now there are actually three different variations of the Thornycroft, there are two different variations of the Godsall, and frankly there are so few of both of these rifles built that really no two are quite identical. So uh, in here we cover all of those different patterns. We then move, well I should say, it actually starts with an introduction um, about the etymology of the word bullpup, the definition of bullpup in terms of firearms, and how they have how they're different than, better than, worse than traditional styles of firearms. So from that we then move to the Thornycroft and the Godsoul, and from there we move to World War II. There were a number of bullpup rifle developments during and just after World War II that actually come before the EM series rifles that most people are familiar with. Most significantly there was a prototype sniper rifle that was also bullpup. Uh, interestingly used the pistol grip as a charging handle for the gun. Very interesting rifle we have discussion of that in here. And then it moves to the EM series that more people are familiar with. And again, there are actually three different patterns of EM rifles uh, as they're currently recognized. The first one is the Corsac, which is interestingly sort of a, a light support weapon derived very heavily from the German FG-42. There is then the EM-1 uh, Thorpe rifle, which is what people traditionally recognize when you say EM-1. Uh, and then there is the EM-2, and the Thorpe, by the way, is a roller-locked system, uh, gas-operated roller-locked. And then we have the EM-2 Janssen, which is the most widely known of the three, uh, that is uh, gas-operated, flapper-locked, uh, and it went through substantial development, not quite full development, it was very briefly officially the rifle of the British military, uh, before being unadopted uh, and replaced by the FAL. Now there's a lot of sort of common expectation that the EM-2 was a fantastic wonder weapon, uh, that only politics managed to torpedo. The truth of the matter is that the EM-2 had some very real uh, vulnerabilities and some potential problems, and it would have taken a, a significant amount of development work to turn it into something that was truly combat issue ready. And that's one of the really interesting aspects to this book that Jonathan goes into is What's the what? What is the reality behind some of the popular conception of some of these rifles? Was the EM-2 really a wonder weapon? Was the L-85A1 really a complete unfettered disaster? Yeah, the truth is neither of those are quite totally true, although of course they are both based in reality. So uh, after the EM series of rifles we then move to the, the third wave of British bullpups, which is what would eventually result in the L-85 rifle, but it begins with the Enfield weapon system in 4.85mm and goes through the XL60 and XL70 series of trials rifles, as the, the pattern was slowly developed up to the point where it was finally adopted as the L-85A1. Once again there is a tremendous amount of uh, primary source research that went into the book here. You may be familiar with the collector grade book, uh, The Last Enfield, written by Stephen Raw on the L85. Uh, Jonathan has taken that and expanded on it further, uh, using information that wasn't available when that book was written, as well as I think giving a little more fair and balanced account of 
the whole story and history of the L85 weapons system, or uh, the SA-80 weapons system, I should say. And of course, this goes all the way through the uh, L85A3, or SA-80A3, the, all of the reworks done by Heckler and Koch, all the way up to basically the present day. Uh, it also includes a lot of the uh, sub-variants of the L85, including the carbines, of course the light support weapon, uh, underbarrel grenade launchers, cadet rifles, a, a myriad of sub-variants like that. So it really is a thoroughly comprehensive book on British bullpups. There really isn't anything in the British bullpup landscape that you will not find in this book. It comes in at a total of 620 pages, which is a little bit on the huge side. We have a number of really cool appendices at the back covering uh, cartridges, the, the 280 uh, cartridge from the EM2, which went through a huge number of its own uh, design iterations and is a really interesting subject on its own. The 4.85 millimeter cartridge of the original Enfield weapon system, which was tested but not adopted by NATO. Uh, and then operational field trials reports from uh, from the EM2 rifle in Malaysia, which is pretty cool. Uh, nomenclature charts, descriptions, a lot of really good uh, down and dirty information in the back. So, uh, like I said at the beginning, we're very excited that this is finally available in stock and now shipping. Uh, we're very grateful to Jonathan Ferguson for putting all of the immense amount of time into researching and writing this book. Uh, Jonathan is the keeper of firearms and artillery at the National Firearms Centre, colloquially known as the Pattern Room, a massive and fantastic uh, British government firearms collection that includes a lot of the guns that are actually in this book, which put him in a terrific position to do the research, get his hands on the guns, and really understand them as part of uh, his writing. So uh, you can pick up a copy if you are interested in it at headstamppublishing.com. I will have a link in the description text below. We have a number of ancillary uh, elements uh, also available like uh, hand cut leather bookmarks, Ex Libris labels, and the like, as well as, uh, well at this point we don't have new copies of Chasse de Famas available, but as soon as they are they will also be listed on the website. Um, in fact, they are currently listed there, but not currently shipping. We're waiting for the second printing to come in. So anyway, hopefully you guys enjoyed the video. Definitely check out the second book here, Thornycroft SA80 from Headstamp Publishing. Hopefully you enjoyed the video. Thanks for watching.